both of these squads as we come out the gates. TP forward from Arns. Oh, they're going to do the wall TP. Oh, yeah, super high guns. No wall TP. Yeah, so they obviously saw the fusion there, so they were trying to set up the wall TP, but you don't want to just jump into the fusion, otherwise your TP is going to get destroyed and there's going to be like two people um, actually going across. Okay, so it's all about the walls here from Mask 1 IV. Depends if they want to drop. Okay, they do actually decide to drop here, and this is going to be a good position for Rascal to actually be in a funny astral. Oh, he goes down. Oh my god, this is going to be a roll now. Yeah, there's actually nothing you can do. Alarm is in big trouble. Luckily, Rascal had to reload. He's going to block as well and stop all that heals coming through. There is no way if you're the fusion if you make it back into this one. What? Unless Sado hits something actually crazy, but it's looking rather unlikely. Two I mean, they can, if they can touch. Maybe a third. Nope. No touch. What a quick point A from Shock there. Well, I mean, it was Alarm won his 1v1 against Rascal up top, which I thought might be the, the swing back, but they were just so low that you don't want to put your Reinhardt on the point in that scenario. They'd rather just have everyone at full health. Because San Francisco Shock, once they get rolling, are just an unstoppable force. So you don't want to be in a position to let San Francisco just roll through the streets phase on you. You want to be able to at least get a single fight here. And had they fought there, they'd be in big trouble. Wow. Okay, yeah. Uh... Three-man gank squad there uh, at the top. They use the wall a little bit more defensively. There's no run on the payload. Oh, Ivy. If he manages to get super here, it's going to be good. He does manage to freeze him, and Rascal does end up going down. They're kind of split, but this Coalescence is actually doing a lot of work. Sardo's got the Shadow still, and they can now play this Arch, where at least try to. Rascal, of course, not being alive, and Ivy being a, a, just existing is good enough. Both ends up dying to the Venom Mine of all things, but it should be okay for the time being. The Fusion are going to get fluxed and holding the corner is going to be good, but Super with the perfect charge to finish off Sardo. And now they just control the payload. Shock somehow again winning these fights, even though a key player in pushing the cart through the streets, the May, ends up going down first. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but it was a nice trade because they're able to take out Hisu during that fight. Yes, Hisu got a, a Venom Mine kill on a Moth. I'm sure his teammates won't let him live that one down. But that means that Ans doesn't have to worry about all, uh, about anything at all. And Philadelphia is going to have to always play around those sight lines. They have to back up. San Francisco just continues to push over them. And now Rascal is going to have the Blizzard ready. Both teams exchanging the Infrasites. Yeah, I don't know if that Infrasite is really worth because they were trying to set up something on the flank. Of course, the payload will be contested a couple of meters before it hits. It's going to be a beat available for Bunny Astro now. They're going to go on this flank anyway. They don't really care at all. A charge from Sardo to try and get out alive. He's already dies. There's the Blizzard insta kill onto Sardo too. The Flux might and good if they could take down the tanks, but Super is alive and well on this payload. What a ridiculous time now for the Shock to push onto this last point. Five whole minutes. They haven't got too much left to really work with, and Philadelphia Fusion, on the other hand, do. They got Blizzard coming up. They got the Shadow Beat and the Coalescence. Even Hisu switching over to a more brawl style. He is losing these one v ones against Arntex, so not yeah. too much of a shock here. Well, now the the biggest issue right now is that Philadelphia has absolutely no one to touch Arntz. No one has high ground. No one can do anything unless you want to send your Lucio after it, which is not usually a great idea. Great wall, though. Well, their sense of urgency pretty high there, and they do make themselves uh, known on the payload. A perfect pin onto Super. Just escorting him away from the rest of his team in a coalescence as well as going to kill off Violet. That was really nice uh, wrap around there uh, from the fusion. They saw how Shock were playing and they keep doing this. The Shock will split up with uh, three by three, three on the payload, and three go for this flank. And Fusion go, okay, we have Lucio. We're going to speed boost onto the point, warn your Sigma, and then he's going to instantly die. Yeah, the only bad thing for Philadelphia is there they ended up layering support ultimates over each other, but it does allow them to hold this corner. Uh, the last place to fight before last point, but still, Anz is going to be a problem. Yeah, that was a very close. Just getting instantly killed. All oh, that coalescence is doing so much work, actually. Sardo is going so, so low. You can see the pressure, actually. He might not even survive this. The coal well, the Coalescence did the damage, and there you go, a hammer swing, instantly <laughs> killing off Sardo. Alarm's going to fall down as well. They're going to hit the Shatter. Fury goes down. It could be big. He has this Flux coming back, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to even touch the payload. Funny Astro finds the boot onto Rascal, but they still have five people pushing it. The Blizzard from Rascal as he comes back is going to be good. A big boop as well. And Astro ends up going down into the pit. More for Ben and Lucio in this situation. And Arnton's got free reign over this point as well on the Widowmaker. Rascal's Choi kills so off Sardo. Away. And it's only a couple of meters before they land it in on third point. And Ivy's dead too. Arnton is setting up. 
He's got so much space, it's disgusting. Alarm's gonna go down as well. And Hisu gets headshot when he uses the Death Blossom. That's the only thing he can really do to turn the tides. Three minutes in the time bank for the Shock as they complete King's Row. It just once the shot gets rolling, it is impossible to stop them. And even when you think you've stabilized, if they have three people up, they will commit ultimates. They will go after you. And I think no matter what, like, I think Philadelphia made those switches compositionally uh, to go to the Reaper because, like, look, we can't stop the front line and Ons at the same time. We got to decide to try to stop one and then hopefully um, Ons can't be impactful if he doesn't have the front line up because then our tanks will have shields up. So they chose to try to win the front line battle. It didn't necessarily work out and Ons was all alone just clicking heads doing whatever he wanted. Ivy goes down at 90% on his Blizzard which is a safe and grace defensive ultimate. See this is the thing right? You have Hisu. Oh he double headshot as well. Okay. 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 Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Like this is the thing. Who can test Sans in this situation? Is it Ivy with the right clicks with the with the May I schools? Is it Hisu? Can he get a TP up? Well, neither of them really. I mean, you need to focus on the frontline war because your tanks are just going to get rolled over. The best thing about the May is the fact that she can put up a wall. Your Reinhardt can start swinging in, maybe go for a charge. And then you have the Reaper, which is also there to break shields. Like you mentioned, yeah. Hex, pure brawl in the front yeah. line. But Arns, you're banking on maker. winning the front line. Yeah, that's that's they they made the call that they weren't going to win the the widow battle, and you're not going to win it when Ans is hitting 50% of his crit shots. One out of every two shots was a headshot from Ans. He's too good at a video game. He's too good. <laughs> not the short player history as well. Hey, Arns, Echo! I predicted Echo. Okay. I'm trying to make Echo a thing so I have to I can stop playing Genji's in every ranked game. <laughs> Just you. It's just Hex. Just That's it. It's just, it's just Hex. He's forcing. No, but actually, the I talked about this on the pre-show that Rascal does have the Echo. We've seen a little bit of True. Echo in APAC, and um, I mean on Lijiang Tower we see it a little bit too. It can be pretty solid, especially if the other team's not going to run hit scan. Why not? It can be good against the Genji. It's another beam he can't deflect. He's you can potentially go for a hack, but it is very hard. But to happen, you can just kind of shift away. Plus, you're just hard to kind of follow up on, although I say that. Look at this. Look at this flank. There's the hack. So you're talking about the shift to fly away. He does just that, and he's going to be able to glide back down. And Arn's on the uh, uh, with the Ash. We'll take out Ivy as well. So it's a two-man flank from Yisu on Sado to try and take out Rascal. They do not succeed, and then they end up losing someone as well. And another one. The Yisu goes down too. So, uh, again, it's, it's who can test Arn's, but then it's two different directions, right? you got to... Contest Arns, but then Rascal's always up in the skies too. He's 60% towards an ult as well, Hex. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to Ivy, but it was Arns who took down Ivy in the previous fight. So Ivy's going to have to be able to get up there, but you want to be able to get Hisu up there and Ivy to dive him once he's hacked because Coach Gun could be a great disengage. Okay, they have Nano. They're not just going to jump onto... Okay, so they can jump on the supports. They just do a shield, and there's still a lot of damage there, and Alarm ends up going down to Arn. However, they take out Super, so a lot less staying power now available. Sardo goes extraordinarily low as he's found uh, Arn's against Sniper once again in the corner. Nothing you can do. He even gets hacked. He actually made up on the high ground anyway. A late Transcendence from Violet might be good enough, and Rask actually earns himself an EMP in the, in the, in the chaos of it all. He doesn't manage to get it off in time. Everybody crashes back down to Earth, as that flux from Troy was not followed up upon. And the Philadelphia Fusion gaining two ticks and a third here as well as they get this payload moving through King's Row. Yeah, well, that's the answer to the, the Arms question as well. Is you just nano your Winston and let him do the diving for your team. Because even if everyone gets away, everyone's going to be chunked down so bad. And he did a great job of pushing them out into the open where the rest of his team can follow up and get the kills that they need. I mean, with the Zarya and the Winston, Winston's going to be completely safe. And then Fury on the cleanup at the bottom there. He's earned himself a Graviton Surge. Grav into... Well, EMP into grab, whatever way you want to work it here. Funny Astro. <laughs> into the stratosphere. He's got that rally as well. Just enabling uh, the rally on that point is just so massive. Well, EMP. we're in a team fight. That's huge. Six man EMP with a bio grenade on top, I believe, as well. That landed onto Super there. That will uh, be second point, almost guaranteed. There's quite a lot of space they need to actually cover still. Is there was only one person on the payload, although now rounding this second to last corner, they should be okay. 
Well, it's I love this conversation from Philly because it's really smart to play to your advantages. And when you look at San Francisco, you say like everybody is really good, but I think their their two advantages are they have a better Sombra because on Sombra has been mediocre at best, and they have oh, a better flex. Okay, Violet was just on the side. He gets solo grabbed. And now you've got almost nothing on the point. Alarm gets dragged back in though. That supercharger and the Bob did so much work. Bob won definitely one of the best things to actually contest the payload. It getting supercharged as well does a surprising amount of damage. Arns is able to clean that up with the help of his Bob. And now they can hold this, uh, this point here. That looks so good because they managed to kill off Violet, who was on this weird flank with the solo grab. Like, it's not normally a bad yeah. thing. If you can get a support and even, like, maybe force out a uh, defensive tool like the Nano one, to, sorry, like the Immortality Field, sorry, it could be a pretty good trade, but they weren't able to make it stick as that supercharger was there in response. Yeah, Super Bob can be very, very good, and it's only fitting considering his exit animation looks like the Iron Giant flying yeah. away. <laughs> So Ivy's going to have the blade for this next fight, looking for individual hacks up top. Hacking Baptiste is really good if you can get it. Oh, there's the Nano, there's the blade. It looks like kills not out just yet, and Ivy kills two. Oh, that'll be another one as well, as Super's just fending for his life on this payload. That immortality field, I don't think it even came out in the end. Moth was just distracted by Houston that entire time. If he turns his back and tries to get the ammo field out, hey, good luck. You're going to get hacked, or you're just going to get straight up killed. The Fusion, with a little less time in the bank coming into this third point. They still have three minutes, though, so a couple of fights at least. Still solid, and they can win a, a fight just with an EMP here. Uh, the defenders, as long as they're not grouped up. But, I mean, defense is its a little harder to get a, an attacking uh, EMP off because defense is going to be spread out a little bit. You're going to have supports on the high ground, supports a little further away. So I think you can't be greedy and go for a giant six-man EMP again, but just find two or three priority targets. Oh, Ivy is, Ivy is a lot playing of with he has fire no deflect right either. now. So I'm just going to help uh, help him as he jumps into the Mega Pack room. That Mega Health Pack's actually been hacked as well, so that's a, a lot less ground that people like Rascal can actually play around. And it does enable Sardo to kind of stick in this room almost permanently. So a lot of healing, more heat HPS than a Mercy team, so worth keeping in mind. EMP for Hizu, looking for Emmanuel Hack, he jumps straight in. And that's a five-man EMP as well. That rally from Violet is going to be good, but the arm is just not going to be able to build up in time. He's running away from the rest of his team, trying to get out alive. Hizu with the translocator to get out of danger. Rascal ends up going down, and like you just predicted, Hex, Fusion just winning this team fight off this EMP. Absolutely enormous, and now they've got two of their tank ultimates about to come online in Nanoblade, ready to go. The anti-heals have been huge from Alarm. Oh, there is so much. And they take almost zero damage as well as they come back down. Nano Blade in the back. Oh, the immortality field was good, but Moth got booped out of it. Ivy jumps into the grab, finds another two kills, and now his arms on the point. Can't find anything. Killed Sado, but the grenade finished him off. And the fusion, they're going to cap point C with one minute and 44 remaining. Ooh. We're going to some additional rounds. <laughs> what a sec here. I, I just, I, overall, I think that Philadelphia is really smart playing to their strengths of running the Genji, running the Sombra. They, they, I don't think there's any doubt that they have the best Sombra player in the server. Hisu Sombra has been very, very solid for them, uh, especially recently. And Ans, I think, just does not like playing it that much. Um, I, I said better flex support. Maybe a miss, uh, misspeaking there. Alarms, Anna, I think, is actually just amazing, especially if Twilight's not in the game. Violet's good on everything else, but I think Alarms, Anna has proven time and again to be the best part of the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, a minute difference, and that's actually pretty big. That is one more attempt, and it also allows you to make sure you get every ultimate up. 144 is the cusp of like most ultimates. Um, some of the faster charging ones, especially. You can get a Transcendence maybe. Um, you could definitely get Nano in that instance. But oh, San yeah. Francisco nice. is going to have a much better push when they turn around on offense because they can just wait for it to all come through. There were so many hype support players coming into the season. Alarm, yeah. definitely one of them. Of course, he did play on uh, BK Stars way back when in uh, Apex Season 1. He actually played Tank at that time uh, with Twilight on the roster too. So there's a fun little fact for you. He's uh, facing okay, one of his very, very old teammates. And Alarm being on the uh, Fusion University roster also alongside people like Snillo. It was only a matter of time before people like him and Astro were going to make it to the league. And uh, you can see exactly why the Fusion wanted to keep him and the, or the Philly organization wanted to keep him. Uh, he yeah. performances like this. Well, this is another reason that Rascal gets to play is his versatility. He's going to be playing Sombra from San Francisco Shock on their defense. Individual hack can be enormous. They get Ivy hacked. He lives through it. Big wrap around. I do always like these two prongs attacks though from uh, the shock. Just 
playing also split, so still less value from uh, people like Sardo and Ivy who love to kind of just cleave people and burn ults. Although it's a bit easier for Hisu because he can kind of isolate one target or just kind of sit there and spam a tank until he gets ult. So very slow though. Yeah, I, I think this is designed for Philadelphia to make sure they can clear out the high ground. Well, they, what, they just went for a hack. He's just literally sitting here. He is passively gaining ult charge. A, a snail's pace, unfortunately, as he's uh, not gone in to do really any damage. Okay, there's the hack. He landed onto the brief, but I think he actually got interrupted, but it didn't matter. But they do trade support as Lama also ends up falling. Astro needs to get to with the rest of his team at this point to heal them all up. Although with Moth being surrounded and no immortality field available, Sado and Ivy just executing the perfect dive. Answers up onto the high ground and this uh this split up post from the shock, I do really like it, but the problem is if you give fusion the space, they're going to take a whole bunch of it. Aunt at least kills two people on the retreat, however, the fusion are still gonna be able to at least gain a tick here. The initial dive on a Violet was absolutely a thing of beauty. To be waiting back there as long as he was, even if the hack was interrupted, the, the dive and the damage Young that point. came through on him so quickly. Okay, they hacked Astro. Now we have Rascal nearing the EMP of his own. He's got 5% uh, away. Here comes the Bob. It got launched into Neverland. Actually, it's on a sick flank, mind you. Super's Arisa manages to find a kill as well. Arnz's Bob is doing so much work already. The Nano is not going to be available for that blade. Ivy just jumped straight in. He's just built up an EMP, but it's way too late. 1 minute and 44 was in the time bank hex, and Hisu only just gets the EMP. They were trying to set up this dive for this entire time, and I said, I, I literally said it a second ago, it, a snail's pace actually building up because he's not doing damage. No, wasn't doing anything, it just playing a little bit uh, afraid because you're you're banking all in on that EMP, and the only way to charge EMP slower is to be dead. Um, but you still yes. have to take some chances there. Maybe go for individual hacks. I don't know if maybe his translocate was in a bad spot that it would have put him at... at at risk of getting killed, but I think teams still have not learned that San Francisco is always in a fight. They're always in a fight until you hear the team kill horn. And even then, somehow, I, I don't know how they, they pull those back, but uh, they just are able to wait it out. They get EMP faster. The Bob is an extra person on the point. They're able to tap toes onto the point with Super, eventually just overwhelm Philadelphia, who was in a good spot there, but never getting the EMP is brutal because I mentioned at 144, one of the ults you expect to get up in a 144 fight is your EMP, and the fact it never came is, is a little bit tough for Philadelphia. Yeah, extraordinarily tough. And uh, mind you, Hex, I want to say that ball wasn't even on the point. Like, he was actually on the statue, creating the perfect flank. I mean, you're having to touch the point, of course, because you don't want OT to take down. Then you got Bob shooting you in the back. you got Super holding them one like he does best. Shock now at three minutes to capture about 85% of this first point. That's really one fight here. So, okay, Rascal jumping over to the May. They just need one Blizzard, ideally. Or an Arnt, I think, is just going to be sticking on this Widowmaker. Yeah. Because, again, you just need one pick. That's really what you need yes. to make an incision. With three minutes, you can wait for all of your ultimates. Or, you I mean, you can play it slow, or you can go brawl and hope that Ans ends up getting a pick and just opens it up for you. San Francisco really doesn't lose 6v5 fights. Um, or, eventually, you can just wait for Blizzard. Nice anti-heal, but they're all in safe quarters. These nades are pretty good from uh, Alarm. Of course, there's a high ground you can kind of uh, splash it off. Okay, now they push him on the payload. Perfect flank as well, because Ans is actually just sitting in the spawn, so he can just take pock shots at people that are contesting. Sado's gonna go sky high, I told you, just there. Arnt is taking the flank, or look, not really a flank, you're just playing it straight up, and now they're gonna be able to secure a tick. The Philadelphia Fusion have lost a DPS and a tank and Fury now as Arnt is on the ground. Ivy tries to take him out, but the support that they are giving him is just ridiculous. There's not really much he can do now. Astro scurrying for cover and the coalescence from Violet is gonna make sure they're punished for every single step they take on this point. Even a boop on Dosado out of the bubble. Headshot by Arnt again. And the Shock are going to complete map two and tie the series up one apiece. Well, San Francisco and King's Row name a more iconic duo. They are now 9-1 on the season, and this map looks custom-made for them. Able to run the old Zarya and Reinhardt composition with a super-aggressive Reinhardt. Opens up all the space in the world for your ace sniper. Rascal Jack-of-all-trades plays everything. It's just a 
perfect map for them. It allows Moth to play Lucio. It plays to their strengths so well. Philadelphia had a nice first offense, but their second offense left a little something to be desired. But that San Francisco's map pick, you expect them to win that one. And we have ourselves a series and a half here, living up to the hype so far, Jaws. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes the full distance again, and I really do hope it does. We're going to jump to a quick break. Watchpoint is...